you're taking NMA, but is it actually reaching your cells? That's the bioavailability question. Today, we're looking at the leading edge solution, liposomal NMN. We'll break down what liposomes are and see if they truly offer a significant advantage over standard NMN capsules. Let's get to the data. This paper, Intervention Study Comparing Blood NAD Plus Concentrations with Liposomal and Non-Liposomal Nicotinamide Mononucleotide, published in the Annals of Clinical and Medical Reports, is central to our discussion. It's a randomized placebo-controlled trial, even though it's called an intervention study, that directly compares the blood NAD levels for liposomal NMN, regular NMN, and a placebo. We'll explore the results in some detail. Let's start off with NAD+. This molecule is fundamental to life. It's found in every single cell of your body. NAD+, acts as a crucial coenzyme, powering countless biochemical reactions. Think of it as a spark plug for your cellular engine, essential for energy production in your mitochondria and vital for DNA repair. Unfortunately, NAD plus levels decline as we age. This decline is linked to many age-related issues. Restoring NAD plus has shown promise in animal studies, suggesting it can help mitigate some of the hallmarks of aging. NMN is a well-known precursor to NAD plus, supplementing with NMN has been shown to effectively boost NAD plus levels in both animals and human studies. This particular study focuses on comparing the effectiveness of two NMN formats, liposomal and non-liposomal, in raising blood NAD plus levels. It's important to note this study measures NAD plus in the blood, not in tissues. While tissue NAD plus levels are ultimately more relevant, measuring them requires invasive biopsies. Blood levels are commonly used proxy in human studies. This study is not designed to measure any clinical benefits from raising NAD. It focuses solely on the pharmacokinetics, which is to say how well the NMN is absorbed and turned into NAD+. So NMN boosts NAD+, but how do liposomes fit into the picture? NMN on its own faces a challenge. It doesn't readily enter cells. We'll go into the natural cellular uptake of NMN in a moment. But first, let's explore how liposomes help. Imagine liposomes as tiny, ultra-efficient delivery vehicles. They're essentially microscopic spheres made of phospholipids, the same building blocks that make up your cell membranes. These phospholipids arrange themselves into a double-layered membrane. The heads of the phospholipids, shown here in green, are hydrophilic. They love water. The tails are hydrophobic, they repel water. This ingenious arrangement creates a water-soluble sphere that can encapsulate a payload, in this case, NMN. Now here's where the magic happens. Your cell membranes, shown here in red, are also made of phospholipid bilayers. Because these membranes are so similar, the liposome can seamlessly fuse with the cell membrane. This fusion releases the NMN directly into the cell bypassing the usual uptake mechanisms and potentially increasing bioavailability. Now let's contrast this with the typical journey of NMN into your cells. NMN itself is too large to directly pass through the cell membrane. While there is a transporter called SLC12A8 that can move NMN into cells, it's important to note that this transporter has only been identified in mice and hasn't been found in humans yet. So in this case, how does NMN get inside the cell? First, NMN is converted to nicotinamide riboside, or NR, by an enzyme called CD73. NR is then able to enter the cell through a family of transporters known as ENTS. Once inside, NR is converted back into NMN, which then proceeds through the NAD plus salvage pathway to become NAD plus. This entire process requires two ATP molecules, which is cellular energy being expended. In contrast, as we just saw, liposomal NMN can bypass this multi-step process. The liposome fuses directly with the cell membrane, delivering NMN straight into the cytosol. I have some additional thoughts on how this is working in this case, which I'll share later. But for now, 
let's dive into the study and see its results. The study involved 15 healthy men, all over the age of 40. They were randomly divided into three groups, a placebo control group, a non-liposomal NMN group, and a liposomal NMN group. It's important to note that this was a randomized placebo controlled trial, which is a strong methodology. However, the sample size was relatively small with only five participants per group. This means that while the results are promising, larger studies would be needed to confirm these findings. The intervention period for this study lasted four weeks. During this time, both NMN groups, the liposomal and non-liposomal, received 350 milligrams of NMN daily, administered in capsule form. It's worth noting that 350 milligrams is considered a relatively low dose of NMN. The capsules were taken after breakfast, meaning that they weren't consumed on an empty stomach. To minimize confounding factors, participants were instructed to maintain their usual lifestyle and avoid making any significant changes during the study period. To track the impact of the NMN supplementation, blood NAD plus levels were measured at four key time points. First, at baseline, before any supplementation began. Second, one hour after the first dose of NMN was taken. Third, after the four week inter intervention period was completed. And finally, four weeks after the intervention ended to see if NAD plus levels remained elevated. This timeline allows us to see both the immediate and longer term effects of liposomal and non-liposomal NMN on blood NAD plus levels. Now let's dive into the data. First, looking at the one hour post supplementation measurements, we see no significant changes in NAD plus levels across any of the groups. This suggests that at this early point, the NMN had not been effectively absorbed into the bloodstream. To get a clearer picture, I've compiled the data from the text into this table. After four weeks of supplementation, the results are more revealing. As expected, the placebo group showed no significant change in NAD plus levels. However, both NMN groups saw significant increases. The liposomal NMN group experienced an 83.6% increase, while the non-liposomal NMN group saw a 66.7% increase. Notably, the liposomal group had a higher baseline NAD plus level, yet still achieved a larger percentage increase. One detail is that the non-liposomal group was significant with respect to the one hour measurement, but not baseline. Moving on to the eight week measurements, four weeks after the intervention ended, we observed some interesting trends. The placebo group showed a significant increase in NAD compared to the baseline, a finding the study authors note but can't explain. The liposomal NMN group still showed a significant increase from baseline, although the increase was less pronounced than at four weeks. The non-liposomal NMN group, while still higher than baseline, didn't show a statistically significant increase. These results suggest that the effects of liposomal NMN may persist longer than those of non-liposomal NMN. Although some of the changes are significant, the levels are moving back towards baseline, which would imply that NMN needs to be taken continuously to maintain higher NAD levels. This graph illustrates the key comparisons between the liposomal and non-liposomal NMN groups after four weeks of supplementation. As you can see, the final NAD plus levels in the liposomal NMN group was approximately 20% higher than that of the non-liposomal NMN group. Importantly, this difference was statistically significant, indicating a real and meaningful advantage for liposomal NMN in raising NAD plus levels. Looking at the results after eight weeks, so four weeks after supplementation ended, we see a different picture. This graph shows that there was no statistically significant difference in NAD plus levels between the liposomal and non-liposomal NMN groups. Now let's delve into the intriguing question of how liposomal NMN actually works in this context. As we discussed earlier, liposomes deliver their payload by fusing with the cell membranes. If a liposomal drug is injected, it directly enters the bloodstream and can fuse with cells throughout the body. However, with oral administration, the journey is more complex. Assuming the liposomes survive the harsh digestive environment, they must then cross the gut wall 
to enter the bloodstream. The gut wall, being composed of cells, should theoretically allow liposome fusion. But can liposomes cross the gut wall intact from the gut lumen? I'm not entirely convinced, though I admit I'm uncertain. Adding to the complexity, the study measured NAD plus levels in the blood, not in tissues. The specific measurement methods weren't detailed, so it's unclear whether they assessed serum or blood cell NAD plus. In essence, the study doesn't definitively clarify the mechanism by which NMN enters the bloodstream. It's possible that liposomes enhance NMN absorption across the gut wall without necessarily entering the bloodstream themselves. If this is the case, NMN would still need to undergo the NR conversion process to enter tissue cells. As we learned through our conversations with experts like Drs. Joe Bauer and Lindsay Wu, NMN absorption and NAD plus metabolism is often more intricate than it initially appears. Therefore, my key takeaway is this. Liposomal NMN does seem to elevate NAD plus levels more effectively. However, the exact mechanism remains unclear and warrants further investigation. To wrap up, let's address a few key points about the study. It's important to note that the liposomal NMN used was provided by Premier Anti-Aging, a Japanese supplement company. While this doesn't automatically invalidate the findings, transparency is crucial. The study lacked a formal funding declaration and a conflict of interest statement also, the source of the non-liposomal NMN was not disclosed. Additionally, the study's small sample size with only five participants per group and the relatively short four-week intervention period are limitations that should be considered. Despite these concerns, it's commendable that the study explored liposomal NMN. To my knowledge, this is one of the first human trials to directly compare liposomal and non-liposomal NMN and the results showing a potential advantage for liposomal NMN in raising blood, blood NAD plus levels are certainly intriguing. Thank you for your attention. If you found this helpful, please do subscribe to the channel, and I wish you all well.